guys, welcome back to another session of Fun with Pharmacokinetics. Today we're going to talk about bioavailability. We're going to talk about bioavailability, that way we can understand what's going on when a drug enters the body. So without any further ado, let's get started. Alright, the first thing we've got to know about bioavailability is we have to understand that when a drug enters the body, it goes through a long journey before it can even reach systemic circulation. When a drug is entered, first it has to go through the gastrointestinal lumen. Already that sounds pretty scary. And then it has to go through the gut wall, has to get to the liver, and then if it hasn't been all eaten up, then it reaches systemic circulation. So you have to understand already these drugs are going through a lot just to get to systemic circulation and be able to do their job. Now the exact definition of bioavailability is it's the percent or the fraction, whatever you like to think in, of a dose that reaches systemic circulation. Now if you look over here at my cake, now a whole cake was made per se, but the, re the part that reaches systemic circulation could be just a fourth of it, or maybe it's as large as a half. It could be up there where it's a 90%, we could have things as low as 1%. So the bioavailability really can change drastically based on what type of drug we're giving and the situation that's going on in the patient's body. Now, bioavailability is expressed as F. I don't know why F, maybe B was already taken for some other reason, but it's known as F. So, from now on, we're going to express it as the letter F. Now, we can determine the amount that reaches systemic circulation if we know two things. If we know dose and we know bioavailability, all we have to do is multiply those together to get the, dr the amount of drug that reaches systemic circulation. Pretty easy equation. So let's take a look at the next slide. So for example, Sagejoxin has an oral bioavailability of 0.7. If we give 250 micrograms to the patient, how much of that will reach systemic circulation? So I'll give you guys a couple seconds to think about that. Do 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 ba do ba do ba. Okay, that's plenty of time me singing. I'm sure you guys have already figured it out because you're smart. All you have to do is take 250 times 0 0.7 and that gives us 170 micrograms that reaches systemic circulation. We'll talk about why that's important. But just in case you guys didn't figure it out, all we had to do is take dose times that bioavailability and that gave us the 175. And in case you're wondering, this little picture over here is known as foxglove, which is actually what we get digoxin from out in the real world. So just in case you're wondering if I just like pretty purple flowers, I do, but that's not the point. Anyhow, next slide. Now, bioavailability only estimates the extent of absorption. It does not take into account the rate. However, rate really isn't that important unless it is so slow, like a turtle, that it limits the absolute bioavailability of the drug. Now, for whatever reason, say something's going on in the body and that rate is being absorbed so slowly, that can change your overall bioavailability. So we'll have to take that into account. We can also have cases where it's so fast that too much drug is being absorbed too quickly. Now that's not saying that different amounts of the drug will be absorbed. The same amount will be absorbed. However, a much higher Tmax could be reached because so much of it is getting absorbed at the same time that we could reach levels that are toxic. And that's no good for our patients. So we have to keep that in mind so we can adjust. Now, just to kind of give a quick example, earlier we talked about that not enough time for a drug to be absorbed. That can happen with patients who have short GI transit times because they're not able to have that complete time they need to absorb the drug. And that could be for various reasons. They could have diarrhea, Ugh, not too good. They could have IBS or even surgery, and there are surgeries where they would need to actually shorten the GI tract, and that could make us have an inability to absorb the complete amount of drug. Now, in case you're wondering, just for completeness sakes, the normal GI transit time is between 24 and 48 hours, and now we could be as short as four, eight, four to eight hours, and that does result in the lower bioavailability. All right, guys, that's all I have for you. That just kind of gives you a brief overview of what's going on in bioavailability, and in our next section, we'll start to get down to the nitty gritty. Thanks, guys.